A little over a year ago, I attempted 100 days in Ark with the mod Primal Fear. And it's quite possibly the hardest mod in Ark, so in this video, I'm back for round 2, and this time I'm actually gonna try and beat the mod in 100 days since I somewhat know what I'm doing now. Day 1 and. Dude, literally, what the heck? I just spawned in and that weird looking Rex looks like it's already wanting to kill me. Anyways, I actually managed to not die to that weird looking Rex, so I crafted a stone pickaxe, hatchet, and a reusable what? spear. I am playing with a few other quality of life mods that I'll link in the description. There's nothing game breaking here, I just know I'm gonna lose my mind playing this mod, so I think you guys can cut me some slack on this one. And moving on, I managed to farm some metal and crystal, and so far this mod isn't too bad besides that Rex at the start. Bruh. Those bugs aren't even a part of the mod, they're in the base game, so if I'm dying to literally one of the weakest dinos in the base game, I think you guys can already tell how this mod is gonna go. Anyway, I'm adding a death to the death counter every time I die, so comment below how many times you think I'm gonna die in this video. Returning to actually beating this mod, I've managed to get my stuff back and I found a nice looking area near a river with obsidian and metal. And by the way, I'm playing this 100 days on the giant monstrosity that is Crystal Isles. Anyway, I managed to form up a singular cooking pot to try and level up my character before I died to a level 24 scorpion. And I also died trying to get my stuff back, but finally... Finally, I managed to retrieve my stuff and trickshot the scorpion to death. So now that I'm safe, I crafted up some S plus stat structures because I'm bougie like that and I managed to kill a nearby vultures for some meat and hide. I then crafted myself a fancy spyglass that is much more useful than the normal one and some reusable bolas. And after that I returned back to my shack and placed a campfire to keep myself fed and I don't know what that is but I'm not finding out. Yeah, it turns out it's a Primal Raptor level 174. And I died once again, leading the Primal Raptor away from my base, but I managed to get back to what was left of my stuff. I then took out my anger on some raptors for hide at the end of the day by recrafting myself another thatch hut. And I know day one was extremely long, but I'm playing 45 minute days here, and that's longer than pretty much every single one of my videos. Well, I hope day two goes better, or else this is gonna be a long video. I managed to rebuild my base and with the forge this time so I can start smelting some metal. And I then crafted a smithy, mortar and pestle, and a metal pickaxe. And after that, I farmed a bunch of wood for the forge and killed to random die more for high. Now, day two is already going much better than day one, but in order to thrive and let alone survive in this mod, I need dinos. So I started farming some narcotics because any mount right now is a good one. And I even managed to craft some potent narcotics, which are nine times stronger than normal narcotics. I'll also have the Primal Fear wiki linked in the description. And that might be nice to have up on a second screen or something while watching this video. I'll try to explain everything to the best of my ability, but you know, I'm kind of a rock. But after a little exploring, I found a level 72 Sarker that would be perfect to have since there are rivers everywhere I can safely travel on. So I farmed up some more Trank Arrows and knocked out the Oversized Crocodile. I also either had or managed to craft the stuff I needed for the saddle, so as long as it doesn't die while it's knocked out, I'm good. After not too long of waiting, the Sarko tamed on day 3 and I named it Ron. I had basically all of my stuff in my inventory and I left as soon as I could, and luckily I did because that was heading right towards my base. And I traveled out towards the Green Obelisk because... Green means safe, right? Just letting you guys know, nowhere is truly safe in this mod. Anyway, I was tired of beating on the run, so I found this grassy hill with the ocean to my back and the swamp to my front, so I decided this will be my home. And there's a level 156 PT here, so uh, yeah, I'm taming that as well. Yeah, so I died to a toxic Fiomia, which is the first and weakest tier of Dino in this mod. I mean, I didn't really have a chance to fight back, but that's just another death added to the count. And I also added another four deaths getting back to my stuff. I really should have placed a bed first thing. Anyway, I got back and took care of the Fiomia and placed a bed because that is not happening again. And good thing I did because not even two minutes later, I encountered my first Kamikaze Dodo. And after that horrible death, I finished the shell of my base by the end of the day and placed some smithy and forges inside of it. Day 4, now that I'm cooking with my new PT that I named Joe, and I had a primal smithy which you can craft all the modest stuff in that's in primal fear. And now, I spent pretty much the rest of the day taming dodos. And you might be saying, Grant, why are you taming dodos? You're not going to be able to kill whatever that thing is with dodos. You're right, dodos won't be able to kill anything, but I need their eggs to make the next tier of kibble being toxic kibble. See, in this mod, the current tier of dinos you have produce eggs that are used to tame the next tier of dinos. So, for example, normal dino eggs make toxic kibble and toxic dinos make alpha kibble and also crops are needed to make these kibbles so towards the end of the day i started crafting crop plots I finished crafting crop plots and foundations for them to sit on on day five but i can't place s plus crop plots on top of each other for some reason but now i realize i need a berry farmer dino to get the seeds for the crop plots and i looked around for a little bit but there wasn't really anything catching my eye besides a level 162 diplo next to my base which i can passive tame now the passive taming part really intrigued me so i got to it and quickly realized this was a big mistake but i did 
didn't really have any other option. And from when I first fed it to when I tamed it, it took 26 minutes. Now, that may not sound like a long time, but you have to understand. I was just standing around waiting to feed it for like half an hour while all I hear is my dodos making noises and pooping out eggs. I was basically going crazy. But also while I was waiting for the Diplo to tame, I was browsing the internet. And a great internet service that'll keep me entertained and safe is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that allows you to virtually change your location to basically anywhere in the world. And you see, if you're like me, you've watched every show on Netflix, so you need some new shows and movies to watch. But your boy has Surfshark, so with one click of a button, boom, I'm in Canada binging hundreds of new shows and movies. But the benefits of Surfshark don't stop there. You see, if I were to upload my next video on a public Wi-Fi without Surfshark, I'd be done for. My video would probably get stolen by some hacker guy and get posted on YouTube without my permission and even worse, without credits to me. I'd have to go back to making Minecraft videos and none of us want that. So yeah, don't take that risk yourself and get Surfshark today using my code which is on screen right now or in the description below to get three months for free. And there's also a 30 day money back guarantee for those of you who decide now. I like getting my information stolen and watching the same shows over and over again. Anyway, once again, get Surfshark today using my code on screen right now or in the description get your first three months for free. And to make it even better, I was too poor to craft the saddle, so I had to spend the rest of the day hitting small rocks for the tiny amount of metal they give. After still farming some small increments of metal in the morning of day six, I had to farm some hide because the Diplo saddles are ridiculously expensive. Maybe because it can seat 11 players, but there's only one of me, so the other 10 are useless. Anyway, now that I'm done ranting, I crafted the Diplo saddle and it's pretty mad farming berries and seeds, but I don't care. And I got the seeds into the crop plots and began placing pipes so that the crops could actually grow. But yeah... No! <laughs> well, at least the stuff inside my base is safe. That's it, I'm moving. And after the ferry left, I grabbed all my stuff that was useful and that I could carry, and I set sail with a raft I made towards the southwest Crystal Beach Islands. And when I arrived, I managed to hop on the back and tame a level 24 Crystal Wyvern I found in the Southern Islands. Now, this guy is pretty bad. I mean, I'm happy to have him as I have no tames anymore, but I wanted to try and find a higher level so I can fly for more than 10 seconds. After only a few minutes of searching into Day 7, I spotted a level 168. And it was pretty easy to tame besides the fact I got thrown off its back once, but I managed to get back on and finish the tame. But anyway, now I'm probably the safest I've ever been since I'm on a fast moving flyer and I decided not to waste any time I'm going to my new base location. And I decided on the dragon cave in the floating islands on the far side of the map. It's big enough to where I should be able to store lots of dinos and has a pretty small entrance I should be able to secure it with a gate. But that... That doesn't sound too safe to me. I never saw what made those explosions, but I'm not gonna poke around and find out. Anyways, after that I went straight to crafting foundations to storage boxes for my new base. And I also bred the crystal wyverns in case both of them die, I have a last resort. And after that I flew around for a little bit and found some metal nodes I could get smelting in my forges. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, I'm playing with a stack mod that reduces weight. Again, it's just a quality of life thing, I usually don't play with these types of mods. And at the end of the day, I discovered wow. the transfer tool, which is really helpful. Now that I had fat stacks of raw metal, I found up some wood to actually smelt it, and then I got the freest loot of my life. So whenever you either kill or a high tier dino that is in the area dies, you automatically get the good loot and the soul it drops that will later be used to craft other tiers of dinos. Anyways, I crafted another primal smithy that hopefully won't get broken by another rogue fable theory again, and I saw what I needed to craft toxic kibble. And yep, I still need crops. So I crafted a sickle and got back to farming crop plots and pipes before placing them and connecting them to a water source. Now, as all of you know, you either need dookie or fertilizer to make the crops grow, and the process of obtaining them is through violently dropping bombs into the toilet. But for some reason, toilets are oddly expensive, so I spent the rest of the day farming crystal and chitin to turn into cementing paste. Day 9, and look at that, a beaver Damn. And that makes all my previous farming of chitin completely useless, but I guess I'll have some more cementing paste later on. And on my way back to base, I farmed some oil, since large amounts of it can be found in rocks in the northeastern part of the map. And finally, later on, I crafted the toilet and proceeded to commit multiple war crimes on it. Anyway, now that my crop plots are properly irrigated and fertilized, I can do some fun stuff like crafting narcotics and actually insane armor. Just kidding, though. For a vanilla arc, it would be really good, but since almost all the dinos in Primal Fear can one-shot you, this armor is still kind of useless. And that's also my reasoning for having only 250 health. And to finish off day 9, I tamed an iguanodon because I was having no luck trying to farm seeds for crops by hand. And I don't know why, but these things are insane at farming seeds. Day 10 was kind of all over the place. I was looking for what I needed to be able to craft toxic kibble, I crafted an S plus fabricator, and I farmed more metal. But even after all that, I managed to craft my first toxic kibble. It'll probably only be used to tame like a toxic dodo or something, but I don't care. This is progress. And yep, looks like I was right because not even 5 minutes later, I was riding around on my newly tamed toxic dodo. But for some reason, Ark, if you want 
your female dino to passively produce unfertilized eggs, you need to have a male and a female. So I just spent the rest of the day flying around searching for a male and I managed to find and tame one just at the end of the day. I got my newly tamed dodo back to my base in the morning of day 11, but if I want to really ramp up my egg production, I'm going to need a few more toxic female dodos. So I crafted up a few more toxic kibbles and tamed two more toxic dodos out on the white shoal beaches. And before too long, I had my first alpha kibble. Now even though I'm only on the second tier of dinos above the base game dinos, they were already getting more difficult to knock out since they have a bunch more torpor. So I spent the rest of the day farming up a bunch of potent narcotics which are 9 times stronger than normal narcotics. Now, day 12 I crafted a few more alpha kibbles because I'm wasting no time on taming alpha dodos for the next kibble. Now I know I could tame some actually useful toxic dinos, but it just doesn't make sense since I can just wait a little more time and have even better dinos like alpha dinos. So I spent the majority of the day back out in the white shoals taming alpha dodos before returning to base. But now I think it's time I get some actually useful dinos like an RG because... Yeah, that was a long wait. So I farmed up a stone trap and then began searching the mountains for an RG to tame, but a Rudolph level 162 caught my eyes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know how these things work, but one of the tutorials I watched before starting playing this mod said to tame Rudolph as soon as you can. But I quickly realized, even with my potent trank arrows, I nope. wasn't gonna be able to knock it out for a while. So I would definitely have to come back and tame that, but luckily not far away, it was a level 168 RG. But yeah, it doesn't Bruh. exactly fit into the trap. Huh. So I returned to my base to craft a new crossbow with more durability and stone dinosaur gates. Now luckily the archie could fit into the gates but it still took a while for it to knock out. Even the low tier dinos in this mod still have a ton of torpor. But I guess the mod kind of makes up for itself since the dinos tame really fast with their specific kibble. However I needed some more alpha hide to craft the saddle. So I spent some time killing some random alpha dinos which took forever even with my good crystal wyvern. I was still farming alpha hide for about a third of the day on 14 because I'm not joking alpha dinos take forever to kill. Anyways. After I finally managed to craft the saddle, I made another alpha kibble and a bunch more refining forges. I wanted to craft the primal forge, which I believe is even better than the S plus industrial forge. But never mind that right now, because as I said earlier, my crystal wyvern is kind of becoming outdated with all these new dinos I'm getting and the ones I have to kill. So I flew back out to the mountains, and after a few bowls, I managed to knock out and tame Rudolph. And uh, yeah, uh, good thing I just tamed Rudolph. For those of you who don't know what just happened, one, I died. Two, if you're wondering how my wyvern just got Thanos snapped out of the air, it's because I died to a Chaos Dodo wyvern. Chaos Dinos do a ton of damage passively to whatever dinos in their radius, circumference, gravitational pull, whatever that mechanic is called. I did manage to get back my stuff safely, but yeah, that's still a big rip for my wyvern. And later on, I crafted Rudolph's saddle, and uh, yeah, his flying mechanics are definitely interesting. I can just float. Moving on, I set out with some trink arrows on the back of Rudolph to tame a level 156 alpha ankylosaurus to mass farm me metal. And after safely securing the unconscious ankylo, I return to my base to craft its kibble just to realize I already had some in my inventory. Bruh. Wait, but don't bruh just yet, because when I returned to tame the ankylo, it was under the map. What? Bro. Bruh. Are you kidding me? I use ghost mode to go under the map to tame it because I don't care if you think it's cheating or not. Maybe Ark should not just tweak out like this. But I swear, if these glitches are in Ark Survival Ascended, I'm gonna organize a raid on Studio Wildcard Headquarters. I did a huge metal run in the morning of day 16. It was made very easy by my Alpha Ankylo farming around a thousand raw metal per swing and my Archie being able to carry the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I also farmed some crystal while I was out. Now after that, I farmed up a bunch of materials for a chainsaw to farm wood. I say materials because my engrams weren't working at the time, so I gathered all the materials to craft a chainsaw and then I spawned one in using admin codes and then threw the resources off a cliff. I hate that I have to do things like this but Primal Fear can be a glitchy mod and Ark is already a glitchy game. Anyways after that I farmed a bunch of wood and got the forge smelting as well as a campfire to cook me some more food. I began looking for an alpha dodic on day 17 to make farming things that required a stone a lot more easier but I quickly got sidetracked when I discovered a new ability of Rudolph's. What the? What the? I'm so... What? What? I'm so fast. So yeah, when I do that explosion thing, I can go super fast and it does a decent amount of damage as well. The only thing I don't really like about Rudolph is you can't really see anything with that red smoke trail he gives off. And this is going to become a constant theme later on in the video. The creator of this mod, Pecan, really knows how to make a good mod. But my brother and Ark, for the love of all Ark players, please turn down the smoke and explosions. Later on in the higher tier boss fights, I can't even see the boss I'm fighting, even if it's three times bigger than the Eiffel Tower. There's just so much smoke and so many explosions. Anyway, now that I'm done ranting and I found a 
a level 126 Alpha Doe to tame, and I spent the rest of the day putting Trank Arrows into it. I crafted some Alpha Kibble and tamed the Alpha Doe in the morning of day 18. And after crafting its saddle, I farmed a decent amount of stone and wood to craft stone foundations to expand my base. And with me now having more room to expand, and my sights still set on the Primal Forge, I grabbed my Ankle and went back to the Oil Rocks in the northeastern part of the map. And just saying, these rocks may be plentiful, but they give horrible drop rates. And after smacking about a million Oil Rocks for the seven oil they each give, I farmed a bunch of obsidian that's in a river for some reason for polymer. But for every polymer, you need two obsidian and two cementy paste. And I spent the rest of the day 18 looking for beaver dams, but there wasn't a single one, so I gotta farm it. <laughs> Psych, I forgot organic polymer existed, so uh, yeah, I don't have to farm this. <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, look at the Primal Fort. It's tiny, just like how fast it smelts things. And I also still crafted some cementing paste because I had to stop anyway from killing that Carquinos. And moving on, I'm starting to have quite a collection of Dodos that are constantly pooping out eggs. So I built a little platform with a ramp that the Dodos could stand on so the eggs could roll down for easier collection. And even after that, I went on a little fabled dino killing spree. Now, it wasn't just because I was doing this because I enjoyed killing things, it was because I needed to loot more specific specifically a primal fabricated rifle. Primal fabricated rifles are one of the best weapons you can have to effectively knock out dinos, mostly because they have insane range, damage, and accuracy. And if I haven't said it already, Fable dinos drop a lot of good loot, and sometimes, rarely, they'll drop a primal rifle. So don't question it later when I suddenly have amazing weapons and armor because I spawn because I kill hundreds of Fable dinos in this video that all drop good loot. But to store all that loot, I need a lot of storage. So I killed another Carquinos and crafted a few S plus vaults to have double the storage of a normal vault. And I also crafted a light because this cave I'm living in is scarier than your basement after you turn the lights off. Day 20, I tried connecting the primal forge to the generator cables, but I couldn't figure it out, so I just gave up on it. I then placed an industrial grill for better food production because a campfire wasn't exactly cutting it anymore. And after that, I wanted a fridge to store preservables, so I went out to the cherry blossom biome with that, like, stream pond thing that has more silica pearls than the entire map of aberration. There was also a random alpha paracer in my base, so I killed it and turned its blood into my first elemental kibble. And for the rest of the day, I'm pretty sure I was looking for elemental dodos to tame, but those don't exist. Day 21, I finally grew a brain and realized that elemental dodos don't exist. So for most of the day, I killed fable dinos in hopes of getting a primal fabricated rifle, but to no avail. But I did get a godlieth, I think is how you say it. Anyway, I got a godlieth long neck rifle, which isn't nearly as good as a primal fabricated rifle, but much better than this crossbow. Also, I wasn't joking when I said I'd be getting a lot of loot. Just look at this. And moving on, if you're wondering how I'm gonna craft better narcotics moving forward, I'll tell you. To get better narcotics, you first have to craft a toxic narcotic using a potent narcotic with some of the toxic blood that you get from killing toxic dinos and some rare flowers and mushrooms. From this toxic narcotic, you can add the blood of another tier of creature to make it stronger, and each tier is 9 times stronger than the one previous. So for example, this toxic narcotic is 18 times stronger than a normal narcotic, and the next narcotic being the alpha narcotic is 27 times stronger than a normal narcotic. I know it's a little confusing, but hopefully this little explanation help you console players who have no idea what's going on, or any of you that clicked on my video after watching a Minecraft Minecraft 100 days video because you thought this was another extremely modded Minecraft 100 days. Now, finally time to use this elemental kibble I crafted. First, I knocked out and tamed an electric parrot. I wasn't going to use it for anything except laying eggs, but let me know if you know where its name is from in the comments. And after that, I knocked out and tamed an ice parrot because I had elemental kibble to spare. And the more variants of creatures I have, the higher chance I have finding another one I can use to lay more eggs. But it looks like taming that ice parrot was a waste of time because a little later I found a male electric parrot. Now, remember the platform I made in my base for the ease of egg collection? Well, yeah, that's now rendered useless because I have a soul terminal. With a soul terminal, you can basically just put all your dinos that are in a soul ball into the terminal and they'll just passively produce eggs. I even had this in my first go at Primal Fear like over a year ago, but I completely forgot about it until now. But for some reason, after placing the soul terminal, I didn't even put my dinos in it for some reason. Instead, I just placed more foundations to expand my base platform. I started day 23 off by placing more foundations because, well, frankly, I have no idea why, but I felt the need to. But moving on, I wanted to tame something with the leftover elemental kibble I had. And just so happened to be a level 168 ice yes, archaeopteryx, but yeah, turns out bolas don't work on them. I managed to fly back on my wyvern to get my stuff, and I just pieced out of there because I was not gonna allow that to happen again. And when I returned to my base, I finally put my egg laying dinos into the soul terminal so I had more space in my base, and I don't know if they produce eggs faster in there or not, but it kind of felt like it. Anyways, another dino that can also lay elemental eggs are electric feather lights. I was originally planning just to tame a male and female to use for egg production, but after I tamed a level 180 female and saw how much damage it could do, I would definitely start using it more. And I also tamed the trash male since I can just stick them both into the soul terminal when I wasn't using the 
the good one. Okay, I know I've been getting a little off track from getting the Primal Fabricated Sniper Rifle, so let's get back to it. I've basically given up on trying to get one from killing Fable Dinos, mostly because I just don't have the patience for it. But however, I have a few good Primal Rifle blueprints. They're super expensive, but I'd rather farm the resources, seeing the goal I need to reach the whole time to craft it, rather than relying on luck of killing Fable Dinos. So firstly, on day 24, I did a huge metal run in that one cave that has more metal than all of Extinction combined. And after I got the metal smelting, I picked the blueprint I was going to craft it into, yeah, that's... That's a lot of stuff. And for some reason, I also got some meat jerky cooking. I know I need it for kibble, but it cooks so slow. Anyway, with all the cementing paste I need to craft the primal rifle, there's no way I'm going to do it crafting in a few mortar and pestles, so I want a chemistry bench. So a little while was spent waiting for the resources to craft, as I had pretty much had everything I needed to craft it at my base. And boom, chemistry bench. And right after that, I just got the farming resources like organic polymer and cementing paste with my feather light. I farmed a bit more chitin that turned it into cementing paste in the morning of day 25 before going out to the bee cave in the red woods with my and if you never played Crystal Isles before, the Redwood has a bee cave in it. And if you're wondering about this bee cave, one, it has bees in it. Two, it has beehives in it. And if you hit it with a dodic or a chainsaw, it gives you more organic polymer than you can know what to do with. So after farming a metric buttload of organic polymer in 12 and a half seconds, I returned to my base and all that I needed was a bit more cementy paste and sap for some reason to craft the primal rifle. So I farmed some more stone and chitin before going out to the mountain hill area to these spruce looking trees because they give sap for some reason. And after that, I had the primal fabricated rifle. Basically, I'm the best player at this game and i farmed up a bunch of narcotic infused bullets in the beginning of day 26 for my new primal rifle and after that i crafted a primal food cooker because i needed the cooked meat jerky to cook faster but after a little while of staring at it wondering why it wasn't working i realized i needed a primal preserving bin not a primal food cooker and look how fast that cooks and now with a decent amount of jerky made i managed to craft my first apex kibble and i also got some more trank bullets and canteens so i don't have to stop and get water every three minutes and i spent the rest of the day looking for an apex dino to tame but i'm pretty sure i didn't see a single apex dino the whole rest of the day. The search continued into the morning of day 27 until I found a level 30 female Apex RG. And I'm a big fan of this primal rifle. It was very easy and effective to knock out the RG with. And not too long after the RG tamed, I found a level 48 male Apex RG that was also tamed extremely easily. And when I returned back to my base, I put the two into the soul terminal to start egg production instantly. I was specifically eyeing down Fabled Kibble because with Fabled Kibble, I could tame a Fabled Grifficorn, which is one of, if not the fastest flying mounts in the mod. But for Fabled Kibble, you also need primal meat jerky so i massacred a few dinos outside my base and got prime meat jerky cooking and later on i brought my iguanodon out to the white shoal beaches to farm rare flowers for narcotic crafting and i managed to craft quite a few apex infused narcotics which is one of the best ones you can make and to craft the bullets that go into the primal rifle you need normal fabricated bullets to turn into primal rifle bullets which you then turn into tranquilizing bullets with the narcotic it's pretty expensive but it's definitely worth it now when i say i wanted a fable grifficorn i like really wanted one but my apex egg production was going really slow so i I went back out to the mountains to tame another female apex rg and after that i finally got my first fabled kibble and the rest of the day was pretty much just spending waiting for the rgs to produce some more apex eggs but i got bored of just waiting around so i went out and tamed an alpha guanodon for better berry farming this is oh it's stuck Baba boy. I farmed a ton of narcotics in the first half of day 29 because there isn't much to do when you're just waiting around for eggs. And I also farmed a bunch more rare flowers and mushrooms by spacking these huge swamp trees in the blood wyvern biome. And now I had farmed tons of apex infused trank bullets and there just so happened to be a level 174 grifficorn. Yeah, this primal rifle is ridiculous. But even more ridiculous is this Grifficorn, which I named Cotton Candy. It's insanely fast and does an absurd amount of damage with its diving swipe attack. After returning from a little killing spree in the morning of day 30, I crafted some more Fabled Kibble and set back out to tame two Fabled Pteranodons, which took pretty much the whole day for some reason. I returned to my base with my newly tamed Fabled Pteranodons in the morning of day 31, and after that I saw what I needed to craft some basic boss kibble, but I was missing an artifact. So I flew out to the weird electric snow biome and then grabbed the artifact to shout before crafting the kibble and flying out to the grass plains area next to the red volcano biome because there's a level 186 dodo wyvern that i wanted to tame but after firing just one trank bull into it i realized i had nowhere near good enough tranks so i just left and after that i was flying around the floating islands because there was another female apex rg which i tamed because the more eggs the better and even after that i found another female hey, apex yo, rg i don't know why there's so many but i'm not complaining and to end off the day i made my first omega kibble because i have to tame a few omega dinos if i want to keep progressing i crafted some more trank bullets in the morning of day 32 i was taming so many things and i still had so many more things to tame i could never keep a good supply of trank bullets and i spent searching for what felt like the whole day for any omega dino but no matter how hard i looked i couldn't find any oh 
there's an Omega Sarko right there. I quickly tamed the oddly orange and red Sarko before taking it back to my base and making another Omega Kibble to hopefully go out and tame another female Omega Sarko. And somehow my luck was really good because there was one basically just below my base. And I managed to knock out and put the Kibble onto the Sarko before, uh, whatever that is showed up. And I was trying to safely lead it away from the Sarko, but I got too close and this happened. <laughs> I was in shock and tired because it was late at night, but I was not happy. Anyway, I managed to fly back over with Rudolph, expecting myself to be impossible to get and for the Sarko to be dead. But no, the Chaos Broodmother was dead. I don't know what killed it, but it was just turned over on its back, deader than my community tab. Anyways, I managed to get my stuff back and the Sarko, and I just went back to base kind of sad because... I got the Sarko, but I have to tame another Grifficorn. And to begin day 33, I crafted some more Trank Bullets and another Fabled Kibble because your boy wants another Fabled Grifficorn. There wasn't any good ones in the den right now, so I just did a little farming like killing an Omega Sarko because I need its blood for Kibbles. And you actually need a lot of blood from the different tiers of creatures in this mod for basically anything, so expect a lot of killing later on in the video. And after some time in my base and away from the Griffin Den, it gave it enough time to spawn a level 162, which I quickly made mine. And I named it Cotton Candy V2 because this is my second Grifficorn, and and it won't be the last. And then I quickly leveled up with these experience potions, which are really useful. I highly recommend them if you're playing Primal Fear yourself. And I finished off day 33 by starting to attack a Primal Carn. Yeah, I thought my Grifficorn did a lot of damage, but this thing had way, way more health. And it took like five minutes of me going back and forth smacking the Carno just for it to die and give me mad loot. Anyways, after that, I crafted my first two Demonic Kibble. Demonic creatures are the first tier of creatures that are actually somewhat strong in this mod and can hold their own against big bosses. And I spent most of the day flying around the map looking for my first first demonic creature. I wanted to tame a demonic thorny dragon. And I found a level 174 towards the end of the day. I've never had one of these before, but from what I saw from other people's videos is that they can do millions of damage in seconds with their tail spine projectile ability. Yep, this is the best thing I've ever tamed. Anyway, now that I've cleansed the world of any poor creatures that happen to be in my path, I want to fight my first boss, that being the Demonic Reaper Empress. Well, technically, it's the second tier of bosses, the first being Origin Dinos, which you can find all over the map or spawn them in with a bit of artifacts and some blood, but they're all kind of a joke to kill. However, you need a token from each of the Origin Dinos that you get from killing them to spawn the Reaper Empress in. It looks like I'm going to have to kill a bunch of Origin Dinos to spawn it. Never mind, there's one right there. And yes, they do spawn naturally. Look it up before commenting that I spawned it in using admin codes. I then quickly flew back to my base to craft health potions because I didn't know if it'll despawn or not or something. And these health potions are a necessity in any boss fight because they heal your dino a certain percentage over a certain amount of time. Not this one though, because I cheesed it standing on a pillar where it couldn't attack me. And from the Empress, I got a few tech rams, a soul I'll need to craft some other bosses later down the line with, and a tameable version of the Empress. But if I'm gonna successfully knock this thing out, I'm gonna need a lot of stronger narcotics. So basically the entire day 36 was dedicated to it. I farmed mushrooms, flowers, blood, berries, and crafted tons of primal narcotics. Day 37, I crafted a demonic kibble so I could actually tame the empress when it was out. And as you can tell, I was pretty nervous. Okay, I, I hope I don't mess this up. Is that a joke? 6k torpor with the best trank bullet in the game? Sadly, that's not a joke. However, I was informed about a little thing called an origin trank arrow. Apparently, the origin dinos I was talking about earlier dropped one blood, which can be turned into an origin narcotic, which can be put on an arrow. And apparently, the said arrow will knock any dino out in just one shot. So I found an origin Argentavis to kill, which was super easy, and I got the blood. But I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty skeptical about this. I returned to my base and made the arrow, and I would use one of the primal compound bows I got from killing some random dino well let's let's see if this works and to my surprise, it actually did work. So yeah, now I had a huge fiery killing machine, but I was kind of disappointed with it. This thing can't jump? What? It couldn't jump, and it was really big and clunky. So I think I'll probably keep using my demonic thorny dragon from now on. Also, if you were wondering why it says I'm immune to radiation in the bottom right corner, it's because I got a good piece of armor from killing a primo dino that does that. I'll get tons of armor that has special effects throughout the video, so don't question it when I'm piling up status effects. Anyway, since the dinos I'm gonna start taming soon keep getting bigger and bigger, I wanna build a big platform on my base that has more space for them to stand on. So for the rest of the day, I farmed stone and crafted stone structures. Day 38, and I started placing said stone structures, but it wasn't going to be very practical. It would take me like 10 days to farm all the resources and place the thousands of pillars and stone ceilings. But luckily, I remembered stone cliff platforms existed. So for the rest of day 38 and about half of day 39 was spent farming and placing stone cliff platforms. Day 39 and hey, what's that?
Well, now I know to never go near a skeletalized Tyrannosaur again. Anyway, I managed to somehow get my stuff back safely, but I now have to tame another Grifficorn. But there wasn't any good levels right now, so I went through and killed all the bad ones, allowing a level 174 to spawn. But I don't feel like taming a fourth Grifficorn when this one dies, so I wanted to tame another, start a breeding pair when I find one. Brother! I was looking for another female thorny dragon to tame on day 40. Just the thought of an imprinted demonic thorny dragon doing millions of damage in seconds sounded so awesome to me. But it took the whole day of circling the map for like 40 minutes until I finally found a level 150. Luckily, they aren't that hard to tame on the back of a Grifficorn. Day 41, and fun fact, you can't breed demonic dinos. Even though demonic eggs are a thing, you just can't get fertilized demonic eggs for some reason. So it's nice that was a big waste of time, but I guess I do have a backup if my main one, Taki, dies. Anyway, after that big disappointment, and I crafted another fabled kibble and skinned the griffin den, but again, no good level grifficorns were in sight. But after like 10 minutes of messing around with my demonic thorny dragon, there was a level 168 practically no! begging to be mine. I love crystal isles and its high levels. After that, I returned to my base and instantly got my grifficorns breeding while I stared into the primal smithy looking at the thousands of resources I'll have to farm to sub in all the bosses. But then the ultimate cotton canned popped out. Yeah, so its name doesn't fit, so I just renamed it to Joe. I spent the first half of day 42 raising Joe to make sure I get a 100% imprint on him. And after putting some levels into him with some experience potions, I had a little fun flying around on him, and I killed an Origin Rex with my Thorny Dragon because it's super easy and I'll need all the tokens and blood I can get. And I then proceeded to craft an Origin Tranko and kill an Origin RG and Raptor because I can. Day 43 and the next boss I need to kill is the Celestial and Dominus Rex, and the only thing I really need to summon is a few more Origin Dino tokens. So I killed an Origin Karaku, Rex, Spino, Karno, Dire Bear, and Wyvern. And there's a big flat plateau area above my base where I'd spawn in all the Origin Dinos with their summoners I crafted in my base throughout the rest of this video. It would basically become my Origin Killing Battleground. Day 44, and it's nerf or nothing. Nope, it's Celestial Indom fight time. Now, I was trying to cheese this fight as well, but you see that? I can't power up on my Thorny Dragon, and if you haven't caught on so far, your creature does way more damage and takes less damage when it's powered up. And also, when it's powered up, you, the rider, are immune to damage. So, can you see the problem here? I can't do very much damage, and I can easily get one shot right off the back of my Thorny Dragon. Example A. I grabbed my Reaper Empress because I didn't know how long the Thorny Dragon had to live without me, and I then flew back on Cotton Candy V3, threw out my Empress, and managed to safely secure my Thorny Dragon luckily. And from then on, I would have to wait till the power-up block would wear off, I would then peek over the edge, shoot some spikes down at the Celestial Indom, hide, and then do it all over again. I mean, it took a while, but it worked. I got pretty much the same stuff as I got from the Reaper Empress, but I got a tameable Indom summoner. After that, I returned to my base and threw out my Demonic Dinos for them to heal, crafted a Celestial Kibble, and I went out and summoned the Indom. And yeah, I shot it with an Origin Arrow, and it went to sleep easier than the Empress, but it also sunk to the bottom of the ocean. No. Not to worry though, because I found out Rudolph can swim somewhat fast and I managed to swim down to the bottom of the ocean and tame it. And as you all can probably assume, I finished off day 44 with a classic murdering spree on the back of my new Celestial Indom. A little not so hidden feature in the S Plus mod is that with some S Plus transmitters, you can search for a specific dino you want to make tame or kill and see where it is on the map. So obviously I wanted to do that, but I need a tech replicator to craft those transmitters. So I then proceeded to farm a bunch of crystal for the replicator and tame a fabled itchy. You need black pearls to craft literally anything tech, so I need to have an actual underwater melt. And there's a lot of good, really strong stuff in the ocean I don't feel like fighting, so I decided a fast itchy would be good enough. And after returning to my basic crafted saddle, I was informed with a quick Google search this was also a big waste of my time. So you know that electric snow biome? Yeah, those floating bubbles actually have a lot of black pearls inside of them. So I can literally just swim up by hand, grab the pearls, and get back on my Grifficorn. And after that, I farmed some more polymer by killing a crab, and just like that, I have an S plus tech replicator. I then placed it in crafted just one transmitter to see how it worked. However, I do need a tech generator for it to work, so I craft one just to realize I need another transmitter to even see the dino. And you see that little thing at the bottom right? The more transmitters you have, the more information you can see about the dino. So I proceeded to craft two more transmitters and just didn't do anything with them. Didn't even go tame a dino or anything. All right, all right, all right. So the next bosses I have to kill are the spirit and chaos guardians, but they require a lot of stuff to craft their summoners, so I'll just passively farm their requirements while I do other things. Anyway, moving on, I crafted two more demonic kibble because I want to tame more demonic thorny dragons. The chaos and spirit gardens are flying wyverns, so basically my plan is just to have a lot of thorny dragons lighting up the sky like it's the 4th of July. Bars. But while I was searching for one to tame, me and my grifficorn got deleted.
I was back at it again on day 47 with my newly raised Grifficorn, but nothing really happened. I had just done a Dino Wipe because I'm allowed to do those, and because the higher tier Dinos have a hard time respawning in in this mod, so the Dino Wipe just kind of helps out. I saw a Fabled Mega Chalon was on the map on day 48. I really wanted to tame it because they passively produce a ton of rare flowers and mushrooms, and I need a ton of both for crafting narcotics and health potions. So I crafted a Fabled Kibble and found a nearly fully grown adolescent Grifficorn just chilling in my base. I guess I accidentally left the two on breeding. Anyways, I just imprinted the dude and went to go tame the oversized turtle. Never mind about the oversized turtle because I watched it get eaten alive, so that's a big bummer. However, the S plus transmitter said there was another one nearby, but when I went underwater with my itchy, there was literally nothing down there but death. Moving on, I decided to stay on dry land for a while, or in the air, I guess. There was a high level flowing dragon that would be perfect addition to my army, so I tamed it. Day 49, I stumbled across the spirit manticore. That definitely looked like it could kill me and everything I own in one attack. So naturally, I want it. But sadly, I'm nowhere near close to having the stuff I need to craft some spirit boss kibble to tame it. But a step in that direction is taming celestial dinos for their celestial eggs. So I crafted some celestial kibble before knocking out celestial argentavis I found out in the snow. I guess trank bullets are really subjective to whatever dinos you're knocking out because these bullets did plenty of torpor to the RG. And after I tamed the RG, I just finished off the day with some classic origin and primal dino killing. I was looking for a male celestial RG to tame one day 50, but I stumbled across a celestial rex instead. I tamed it even though I couldn't get eggs from the two. That'd be really weird if I could. Moving on, now if I found out either Rex or Celestial Archie, I could begin Celestial Egg Production. And good thing I did tame the Rex because after I returned to my base and crafted some more kill, I found a male Celestial Rex not even 5 minutes later. And not even 10 minutes later after that, I found a male oh, no. Celestial Argentavis. I guess when you have a map as big as the known universe, a lot of stuff can spawn. And toward the end of the day, I put a stone behemoth gate in front of my entrance to my cave because I was kinda scared something would somehow get in and destroy everything I know and love. Day 51, the Megachalon was still appearing in the S Plus transmitter, so I I returned to the ocean and looked everywhere for it. I even swam into a huge cave, but I never found it. It was probably just like under the map or something. Anyway, for the rest of the day, I just did a lot of summoner requirement farming. You need a lot of demonic and celestial souls to summon the bosses in this mod. And they aren't the most common of dinos, so it always sucks looking for them. Anyway, I had basically everything I needed to either summon the chaos or spirit guardian. But however, I wanted to tame another demonic thorny dragon because I didn't feel comfortable with only three. So towards the end of the day, I luckily found a level 162 demonic thorny dragon, which I knocked out and tamed. The off day 53 i farmed a bunch of rare flowers and rare mushrooms for some health potions and i'm not gonna lie i was kind of shitting my pants for this fight i decided to do the chaos guardian first because chaos sounds scarier than the spirit guardian and let's get the scary stuff out of the way first now thanks to this small youtuber i don't know if you guys have heard of him natural causes he basically told me i'd get folded harder than a wwe wrestler if i felt the guardian out in the open so that's as good enough a reason for me to yeah, cheese the fight anyway i found the cave where the entrance was big but not big enough for the guardian Now, I basically have to farm up all that stuff again to fight the Spirit Guardian. So hold up real quick while I just lay this epic montage. demonic creature I needed and I die. Hello mother What the Anyway, I replaced the structures in my base and went back and killed the demonic monkey to get myself back. And I finally threw out the fabled mega chillon I tamed when I returned to my base to start passively producing rare flowers and mushrooms ASAP. Also, I've been passively collecting armor sets over the past few days, so rate the fit boys. I think I'm looking pretty good. And I also started breeding another Grifficorn because um yeah, the other one, the other one died. Day 59 and I got triplets. I did not expect to have this many little kids. I'm, I'm gonna go get some milk now. So I had to spend the next half an hour raising these three Grifficorns, but I should be good for the rest of the playthrough. I think. But hey, I crafted the Spirit Guardian Summoner. Once again, it was the easiest, I mean the hardest boss fight of my life.
Even though I have structures all over this cave, wild dinos still can spawn in it. And those wild dinos have a chance to be really powerful variants. Anyways, I repaired my base a little before going out and murdering some griffins. I honestly can't remember why I did this, but I do remember setting my sights on a spirit orb. Spirit orbs are used to tame spirit dinos. And spirit dinos basically have the power to drop multiple suns on whatever poor creature is in your path. But since dinos keep spawning in my base, I want to place a heavy turret in my base to hopefully kill them before they do any real damage. So I had to farm some stone for cement paste and silica pearls for electronics. Oh! oh. Yeah, screw this game. Day 61, and I had a spirit orb. And while I was about to start a meta run, there was a level 60 spirit giant queen bee. Now, it's definitely not the best level, but it could still clap whatever dino I put in front of it. So after missing my first origin arrow, I hit it with my second, and it didn't knock out. Aren't these supposed to put anything to sleep with only one arrow? Maybe these spirit dinos are an exception. I don't really know. This dude managed to eat another origin arrow. This guy must have been on more stimulants than these dudes in their pre-workout. So basically, after that, I just lit it up with my trank rifle, and it was out like a light. And now I have a spirit beat. Its mechanics for shooting suns were pretty weird. It did like a 90 degree rotation then shot the sun, so I'll definitely end up missing a lot of these. Doesn't matter though because they do tons of damage. I started day 62 off with the metal run I meant to do on day 61 as well as craft a heavy turret for my base. No. I crashed. So yeah, I crashed trying to use a grapple to put bullets into the turret. And I ended up getting sent back to where I was farming metal, so I decided just to not craft the heavy turret again because I didn't feel like getting deleted again. Instead, I teamed a fabled mantis because I was told they could farm metal a lot better than my alpha Anklio. But when I tested, it was almost exactly the same as the Anklio, so thanks for another waste of my time, natural cop. However, I did farm a bunch of random resources with the mantis and almost died, but since I'm a pro, I survived. I wanted a better spirit bee on day 63, but spirit orbs are super expensive, so I spent the entire day farming the stuff I needed on my current beat. Also, look at the map. I don't know why this happened, but it was fixed with a quick reload. Day 64, and after killing another origin wyvern and dying once while fighting it, I had another spirit orb. And then I was back on the hunt for a better spirit beat. I found the level 162 after not yes. too long of searching it, but I quickly realized I didn't have enough origin trank arrows to knock it out. So I had to spend the whole day looking for origin dinos to kill so I could make some more arrows, but I literally only found one origin carno. And that, my friends, is why I have to do dino wipes or there's no more origin dinos for me to kill. I resorted to spawning in an origin dino with a summoner because I couldn't be asked to look for another. Also, whenever I had an origin dino I needed to kill for blood, I would usually look what dino I had the fused tokens of and I'd kill that one. And most of the time it would be an origin wyvern, the most annoying thing to kill because they never stop flying in circles. But guess what? The spirit bee literally went down with one arrow. I don't know how that happened, maybe it was because my bow's damaged or something, but all that pain was for nothing. Anyway, when the bee tamed, I named her Barry Bee Benson and flew off into the sunset together. And by sunset, I mean massacring literally everything. After deleting the Primal Spino in the morning of day 66, I crafted another Demonic Reaper Empress Summon. I'm pretty sure at the time I wanted to craft a Bone Mail which contained a Skeletorized Tyrannosaur, but I know I never ended up crafting it, so it was pretty much for nothing. I was still wanting to craft a Bone Mail on day 67, I needed another Celestial Emperor Soul. So I crafted myself another Celestial Emperor Summoner and quickly killed it with my new Spirit Beat. And it was super easy since I could just hover over it dropping multiple suns on its head. And I also got this cool sword that summoned a Celestial Owl to fight with me every time I had it equipped. I mean, I'll probably never use it, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, it's day 68, and I'm just over two-thirds of the way done with this 100 days. And looking ahead to me fighting Pecan's Revenge, I still have a bunch more bosses I need to kill as well as resources to farm. And to mix some of the summoners and kibbles I need, you need either Fabled Eggs or Fabled Kibble. And my Fabled Kibble production was not where it needs to be, so I crafted some more Fabled Kibble and tamed another Fabled PT at the end of the day. Okay, no making fun of me in the comments. I struggle to say end of the day every time, and I just can't seem to do it. He probably has a speech impediment, but he is too stupid to realize it. The next day I was pretty consumed just looking into the primal smithy to see all what I needed to do. With this many bosses left, I was kind of left overwhelmed and didn't really know where to start. Day 70 and let's get back on track. Okay, that didn't happen. So the next bosses I have in line to defeat are Nova the Destroyer and Pecan. Pecan is a giant floating worm looking dude and my spirit bee won't be that efficient at taking it down since the suns require you to be pretty accurate to be effective. However, there are chaos bees that have a much quicker attack to do less damage, but they'll be much more effective against it. But to craft a chaos orb to tame it, I need demonic eggs. And I'm pretty sure my demonic thorny dragons don't drop demonic eggs, so I gotta find something else. But turns out there's demonic capros in the swamp below my base and they do drop demonic eggs. And I'm 
manage to tame a female to finish off the day. Day 71, I farmed stone, thatch, and wood because I messed up big time. So when I tried logging in to record on day 71, my game kept crashing. So me being the intellectual genius I am, I decided to uninstall and reinstall all the mods I was using. And it worked, I wasn't crashing anymore. And as long as I load up all the mods before entering my world again, all my stuff should still be there. And it was going perfectly until I spawned in. Turns out I forgot to reinstall the S plus mod, the mod with literally all of my structures in it. So everything that was S plus disappeared into the void because it's not that bad because all my important stuff was in the primal smithy and the primal smithy comes in the primal fear mod. But yeah, I had to spend the rest of the day remaking my base. And I'm back on track on day 72. And I started it by taming demonic parasaur because I wasn't having any luck finding another male demonic cap room. But guess what? Dinos don't spawn when you want them to, so I spent the rest of the day searching for another one to tame, but I didn't find any. Day 73, and it turns out demonic dinos drop eggs even if they aren't in a breeding pair. So I now had enough eggs to make a chaos orb. Now I just have to find the chaos bee to tame. Day 74 started with me killing whatever that is. There's some really weird looking creatures in this mod. Anyway, I found a chaos bee. Oh, hello there! But it's not good like at all, but I'm already tired of looking, so yeah, it's mine now. And I killed an origin dire bear right after I tamed it just to try it out, and it's still pretty good for being a pretty low level. Now that I have that bee, I want to get back to farming for the bosses. And to craft the summoners, you need a lot of origin dino tokens. And I don't feel like looking for 17 million of each type of origin dino, so I'm gonna spawn them in. The only problem is the summoners require artifacts along with blood, but the blood is easy to get, but the artifacts not so much. However, there is a creature called Artifact of the Ascended, a better version of Artifact of the Great. And the these distinguished looking gentlemen drop 18 to 24 artifacts. Now that sounds like a lot, but there's so many origin dinos I'll have to kill in these remaining days. I bet I'll kill this dude at least five more times before the end of this video. So I just farm the resources to summon the artifact of the ascended because the summoner isn't exactly cheap. I found the remaining apex blood I needed for the summoner in the morning of day 76. And by midday, I was fighting the distinguished gentleman. It wasn't a hard fight because I just dropped suns on his head, but it spawned a bunch of weird secret bats that were really just annoying to kill. But it's true, he drops a lot of artifacts. And for the rest of the day, I went on a mass origin dino killing spree. I worked it out on day 77. I need four more Emperor and Empress souls. I'll have to kill Nova the Destroyer and Pecan each four times, so I have four of both of their souls so I can spawn in all four Colossus. And after I killed just one Empress, I realized this was gonna take forever. But since I worked smarter and not harder, I discovered another variant of the Demonic Empress and Emperor. This variant's a lot stronger, but supposedly they drop multiple souls, which could save me a lot of time. But moving on, I need a lot of blood to spawn the origin dinos, so I threw out all of my egg layers so they can make some fertilized eggs. I then just planned on killing the babies for easy blood because I'm lazy and don't feel like hunting for dinos. I started day 78 off with placing more foundations because I have an addiction. And also, I had my first eggs for blood. But the dead bodies literally just ghosted into the floor. Well, since that didn't work, I made a ghetto hatchery right outside of my cave because maybe it was just me being in a cave problem. But nope, this game just sucks. That's it. Remember that raid on Wildcard Headquarters I was talking about? It'll take place on May 32nd at 25.07 a.m. And we will throw cow pies at their windows until they release or three day 79 was boring so i'll make it quick i farmed blood and killed origin dinos i told you it was boring hey alexa play the epic battle music wait that's Right, I don't have an Alexa. Yeah, fights where the bosses don't have air attacks are kind of a joke. But it gave me six demonic Empress souls, which is really nice. Now I just have to farm for the Celestial Emperor Summoner. Uh, yep. Cue the montage. Day 83, and it's time to have an epic battle against the Indominus Rex Emperor. Never mind, it's dead because I'm too powerful and because it's stupid and stands right in my attacks. And now that I have all the Empress and Emperor souls I need, it's time to farm for the Nova Destroyer fight. Yeah, so here is where I'm going to make a complaint about Primal Fear. Primal Fear is a near perfect mod up until you have to fight the Guardians, because everything after that just becomes a farming simulator. You have to beat the previous hero bosses multiple times just to move on to the next one, and it basically just becomes a mindless task of killing hundreds of dinos for their bloods, killing a few artifactos, and a bunch of origin dinos. And it's really disappointing because the early to mid game in this mod is super fun. It's still really grindy, but oddly satisfying when you reach the next tier of dinos. Anyways, my little rant is over, I just think Primal Fear falls short of perfection with its stale and repetitive endgame. But I guess you you can say the same thing about the entirety of Ark. Anyway, I gotta kill more Origin Dinos, so I'll see you guys in a few days. Wow, it's crazy how fast a few days goes with the power of editing. Anyway, I gotta fight over the Destroyer now. He may not have that much health, but with a name like that, I'm sure he does a lot of damage. No. Come on, man.
Well, it all ended up being fine because I logged back into a time before I spawned in Nova, oh. and he was an easy clap. And even better, he dropped an egg, so I can have my own little Nova the Destroyer. Nope, oh, nope, never mind, he is not little. I think I've now achieved God status. I'm convinced nothing can kill me on the back of this guy. But FYI, don't do the tail attack. Even on my tank of a PC, it freezes for a second, and I'm scared I'm gonna crash literally every time. Anyway, I just finished farming the requirements I need to spawn in Pecan to Creator for the end of the day. Oh my god, he is so ugly. Why are you bullying me? But besides him being ugly, the fight went a little like this. Yeah, I thought since Pecan is an air boss, he put up a little bit of a fight, but most of the time he just ignored me. However, I got this dope tech suit that gives me basically infinite snats. And I also have my own baby Pecan. He has a lot more health than Nova, but he isn't nearly as strong. But now, I have to kill both of them another three or four times. Honestly, I can't remember. And that means I have to farm all of those resources again. Bruh. What is happening? There are so many eggs. Okay, so whenever Pecan or Nova die, they're supposed to drop one egg. But it's clear that this Pecan has glitched in and laid a whole army of eggs. Now, I know this isn't intended, but hey. I am now the father to like 20 Pecan the creators. I placed a bunch of air conditioners where I fought the bosses on day 99, and now look at my army of children. And I also had like an extra three Novas as well. And also now, as you can probably see, it is day 100. But I'm not done just yet. I still want to fight the Colossus and kill Pecan's revenge. And for those of you in the comments like, oh, you can't go past 100 days that defeats the whole challenge what do you care you get more video to watch so sit down and shut up i spent all of day 101 leveling up and healing my newly tamed bosses my plan to kill the colossus was to have two pecans go in and soak the damage with all their health and me kill the colossus on my nova that i pumped tons of damage into and my strategy was working on day 102 first the caustic colossus fell to my power then the ice colossus i mean two pecans may have died and i may have died once but it doesn't matter and next the electric colossus died and lastly the Fire Colossus lasted just over a minute and 30 seconds. Kind of pathetic, honestly. Okay, and now the only thing standing between me and glory is Pecan's Revenge. And Nova the Destroyer. Yeah, so turns out I was missing a Destroyer Soul, which I need to summon Pecan. So give me a few days and boom, I have Pecan Summoner. Day 105 and I have every single dino I own out and ready for war. Today, my dinos, we fight for glory and some of you will definitely die. But you will die with honor and because you have no choice. Okay, no more speeches. Let's do this.